recent data shows that an increasing number of Turkish citizens are seeing their Schengen visa applications rejected. Turkey has the second largest number of Schengen visa applicants just after Russia. But over the past few years, their rejection rate has skyrocketed. A Turkish tourism body official says in the first six months of this year, 50% of Turkish visa applications were denied. Less than a decade ago, the visa rejection rate stood at just 4%. But today, even getting a visa appointment has proven much more difficult compared to previous years. Prominent Turkish academics, students and artists have taken to social media to voice their frustration. We spoke to several applicants outside a visa center in Istanbul about their experience of trying to obtain a Schengen visa in this climate. But I am not sure that we're going to get visa or not. I, I applied with my wife. It's really hard to find an appointment for the application at the beginning. So today, just surprisingly, I found a uh, spot. Yeah, I have some friends that were re rejected uh, lately. They were trying to go. To, uh, yeah, they were trying to go to Germany, and it was for school. And they were actually pretty wealthy. Uh, I don't know why they got rejected. And to further discuss the challenges for Turkish Schengen visa applicants, joining me now from Istanbul is Mercan Bayram. He is attorney at law and founder of JBG and Bayram law firm. And from Washington, D.C., Paolo von Chirac. He is the president of the Global Policy Institute. A warm welcome to you both and thanks for joining me on Straight Talk. So, Matt, what's the latest situation on the rising visa rejection rates for Turkish citizens? Uh, the reason is politics. Uh, yes, it's true that the rejection rates for Schengen visa applications have increased worldwide, not just for Turkey. Uh, when we look at the statistics, we can see that numbers climbed from average 8% to 17% from uh, 2007, uh, 2017 and 2022. And the European Union officials also said that it's not a situation specifically for Turkey, but uh, it's a general trend observed in the world. Uh, but uh, when we check the records of applications by Turkish citizens, we can see more than that. Uh, we see that the rejection rates for Turkish citizens increased dramatically from yes. uh, 15, 16 percent to uh, 50. Uh, this cannot be explained by general visa evaluation terms and the global trend. There is a political behind, okay. for sure. Okay. So if you will, I just want to go over some hard numbers on these rejection rates. So last year, 15% of Turkish citizens apply for Schengen visas were rejected. That's a nearly 400% increase from less than a decade ago. In 2014, only 4% of Turks were rejected. 2020 and 2021 saw high numbers, but mainly due to COVID restrictions. So when it came to which countries had the highest rates of refusal, Estonia took top spot, rejecting more than 52% of Turkish applicants. Finland and Belgium rounded out second and third spots. So, Paolo, the head of the EU delegation to Turkey, Mayor Landrut, has repeatedly said that the rejections are not based on political grounds. What's really going on there? Well, I guess the opposite is true, because uh, these numbers are the, the popping up, uh, particularly for some countries, where you have such a high rejection rate. Uh, I mean, it means obviously these are, uh, you know, consular authorities respond to policy guidance. And they, somebody from upstairs said, okay, too many Turkish applications cut by 50%, whatever they, you know, and they, and they respond. It cannot be, it, it cannot be explained otherwise. Mm. So Matt, are you dealing on a um, daily basis with clients who are consulting you for uh, rejected uh, visa applications? How do you help them? And is there a legal action that both you and your clients can take against these rejections? Uh, I wouldn't say daily basis, but it's part of our area. We mostly work with foreigners who are in Turkey. Uh, since you might aware of Turkish government made it harder uh, visa and residence permit process for foreigners. This is a different topic, but maybe we, we can discuss it another time. Uh, uh, the process, uh, application process, uh, if the applicant is denied, uh, they need to examine the letter very carefully uh, because they will see the specific period of time to appeal and carry out the remonstration procedure. 
usually it's one month, but uh, it's always good to check. Uh, we suggest our clients uh, work with an expert uh, during this procedure since uh, it's the last practical uh, option uh, for the applicants. Uh, so uh, they need to uh, make counter arguments yes. uh, for the visa uh, process, uh, visa rejection process, and they need to, uh, if there is a missing document, if there is, uh, why they need to wrongfully deny, they need to prove that. Okay. Basically. So, Paula, it's not just everyday people who are seeing their applications rejected. I just want to bring up some tweets uh, of famous researchers, academics and musicians who has their visas denied, education plans and even entire concerts have been cancelled. So, does that hint at a deeper problem between Turkey and the European Union? What's your take on that? I, I fully agree. Well, let me say that I don't know, you know, at what point we will see the impact. But what just happened, uh, in, as we are speaking, in terms uh, of warmer relations ahead, at least uh, between uh, Turkey and the European Union. We just saw what happened, uh, you know, at the, at the recent summit when President Erdogan met with everybody. This was about NATO, but it was really also about the European Union. I would suspect that this new atmosphere just created will change this environment. I guess this still needs to be seen, but I would think that there has been obviously, um, you know, a, a change right now uh, that will bear some fruits. But until, until yesterday, essentially, we can see what the facts demonstrate, that there is a, a tightening that cannot be explained by general statistics and, and saying, oh, we treat everybody the same, and Turkey or, or, or Guatemala is the same. No, it isn't. So what are your thoughts? I mean, could President Erdogan's latest decision uh, on, to approve Sweden's NATO bid in return for the revival of Turkey's accession talks with the European Union improve the situation, or will it get things uh, more complicated? I would say everything else being equal, it should improve the situation significantly. We are talking about uh, reviving this uh, EU-Turkey dialogue that has been going on for decades and that has been dormant uh, largely because of Europe, uh, you know, perplexities, whatever, skepticism about Turkey government, you, you say whatever you want. Essentially, the idea of is an easy fast track process for Turkey to join the European Union was was gone. Well, now it's been revived. And in the context of that, I would think that the, the visa policy should also be revised. But Matt Brussels has rejected the offer by uh, Turkey saying the EU accession and NATO memberships are two separate processes. So how do you think this is going to play out? Uh, sorry, it's, uh, I don't think it's uh, two separate uh, matters. Uh, I think, uh, in my personal opinion, there will be uh, different opinions and different ideas. But in my personal opinion, these visa problems, rather, uh, let's say, visa sanctions to Turkish citizens, is uh, for the, uh, you know, Turkey was the only country who blocks Sweden to enter the NATO. Uh, so they, they, they put these sanctions to use it on the negotiations. Uh, between the Turkey and the Sweden uh, in terms of NATO application. Uh, so, uh, as we can see from uh, yesterday's uh, President Erdogan's uh, statement, uh, it pays well, and uh, because of that, Turkey uh, give permission to uh, Sweden and also approach the uh, European Union. And we see the positive uh, statements by European Union officials uh, to Tur Turkey's, uh, Turkey's application. Uh, in the near future. So, Paolo, uh, under the March 2016 agreement, the European Union was supposed to uh, waive uh, visa requirements for Turkish citizens. Uh, why it hasn't been materialized so far, and how deep does the misunderstanding between the both sides run, especially when it comes to Turkey's uh, fight against terrorism? The misunderstandings, unfortunately, are old and rather deep. Uh, even uh, to this day, there is, uh, in, in the media coverage, uh, there is a mischaracterization of Turkish uh, demands uh, to Sweden. Mm. Um, you know, I, I, you, we read in the media that says, uh, well, uh, the, the 
Erdogan's government uh, doesn't want uh, uh, Sweden to support uh, uh, Kurdish nationalists. Well, of course, they're not nationalists. We know that, right? But the way it's, it's mischaracterized it tells you something about the general atmosphere, that these are kind of frivolous, uh, strange, and uh, somewhat absurd, almost, demands by the government of Turkey that just to, just to make trouble. And therefore, you know, we try to do the best we can, but we'll, we'll try to find an agreement. But it's not presented, the, the Turkish case is rarely presented fairly mm -hmm. in terms of what is the terrorist uh, issue, uh, what it has been and still is, uh, the terrorist threat by Kurdish militants, uh, PKK and all that in Turkey and, 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 and what it has been. Mm -hmm. So what I'm trying to say is uh, the uh, political um, un understanding was very, level of political understanding was very low. I would think that now with this new impetus, you know, Sweden being allowed into NATO, this uh, talks with the European Union being uh, boosted, revived, we'll have to see, you know, yes. this is just a one declaration, doesn't change policy, but I would suspect that it will. All right, gentlemen, unfortunately, we are out of time. Thank you very much for joining me on Straight Talk.